Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to run your favorite PSP games up to a 4K resolution. Now you can go 720p, 1080, 1440, 4K, and even further than 4K. In this video, I'm as close as I can get to 4K from the native resolution, and with these little tests you'll see in this video, the native resolution is 480 by 272, which is very low. And it's especially noticeable when you're trying to bring these games over to a bigger screen from the screen that was pre-installed on the PSP. Of course, they looked awesome on the PSP, and to this day, I still love playing them. But the differences you're going to get from upscaling PSP games are night and day. Basically, we've taken a game that looks like it was released for the PSP, obviously they were, to a game that looks like it was released on the PS3 or even the PS4. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the installation of PPSSPP, that's the emulator we're going to be using. And by the way, this does work on Mac, Windows, Linux, and Android. So if you're using any of those operating systems, you can follow along with this tutorial. But for my use case, I'm going to be using a Windows 10 PC. Now obviously not everybody's going to be using a 4K display, so it's kind of a moot point to go to 4K if you're just using a 1080p display. But even upscaling from the native resolution of 480 by 272 up to 720 makes a huge difference with these PSP games. So if you're interested in playing your favorite PSP games at a higher resolution, let's go ahead and get started. This is a really simple tutorial. I'm going to show you how to download the emulator, get your controller set up, and then I'm going to show you all the settings that I use to play my PSP games in an HD resolution. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this set up. Like I mentioned, this works for Linux, Mac, Windows, and Android. I'm on a Windows 10 PC, but if you're on Linux or Mac, you can kind of follow along at least with the settings. Getting it installed will be a bit different, but it shouldn't be too hard. Before we get started, there are a few things that you're going to need. Obviously, you'll need some PSP games. I can't tell you where to get them, just do a quick Google search. There are mainly two file types when it comes to PSP games. CSO, which is a compressed ISO, it just makes it a bit smaller and easier to maintain on a PSP, and ISO, which I have right here, otherwise known as a disk image file. Most of the time, you're going to come across the ISO files, but as you can see, I have a lot of CSO files. They're basically the same thing. CSO is just going to be a bit smaller. Next thing you'll need is a controller. You can use your keyboard if you want, but I would recommend using some type of controller that's compatible with Windows, Linux, or Mac. You can use a PS3 controller, PS4, Xbox 360, or even an Xbox One controller. The Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth is my go-to, and that's what I'm going to be using for this video here. So let's get this set up. Super simple to do. All links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description. We're going to open up a browser and we're going to download PPSSPP. From here, we'll just go to Downloads. And if you're doing it on Android, just go to the Google Play Store. We have the Windows version, iOS, and you can install this from Terminal with Mac. We're going with the Windows version. As of making this video, it's 1.93. This will be updated in the future. Just grab the latest release. It's going to download as a zip file. If you don't have any extraction software installed on your PC, you can download WinRAR. Link for this will be in the description. I already have mine installed. We're just going to download it. Very easy to install. And that's it. WinRAR is now installed on your PC. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the PSP zip that we downloaded. Place it on my desktop for easy access. I'm going to right click and extract. I'm just going to extract to its own folder. Inside of the PPSSPP underscore win folder, we can launch the application from here. I'm on a 64-bit computer, so I'm going to be using the Windows 64 version. But before I do this, I always create a shortcut. Right-click, create shortcut, and I place it on my desktop. We're going to launch the application. Just double-click. And you'll notice it's in window mode. We do want to go full screen with this. So we'll go to game settings, full screen, or you can press alt return F11. We're now in full screen mode. So before we mess around with any settings at all, we want to see our games on the main menu. So I'm going to navigate to where I have my games located. They're on my desktop, my C drive, users, my user one, yours will be different, desktop, PSP. This is where I have my games. So as soon as we choose that folder, you'll see that all of my games have populated with images. Very easy to know which game I want to play. So now it's time to get our controller set up. And luckily for us, PPSSPP does this automatically for 99.9% .9 of controllers out there. If you're running an X input controller, 
like an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller, it'll work right out of the box. If you're using PS3 or PS4, it'll also work just fine. But just in case your controller is not recognized, you can go to Settings, Controls, Controller Mapping. And from here, you can map your controller. And one thing that I always do with all of my controllers is map a fast forward button. And I do this because I don't want to sit through some of the menus. So from here, speed toggle, mine's already set up for my right thumbstick. If I press in my R3 button, it'll automatically start fast forwarding the game. If I press it again, it'll stop the fast forward. So I don't need to do anything, but if you want to set up a speed toggle, you can come right here and set it up. So just click on it. I set it to the same button my right thumbstick. And there are a few other hotkeys you can kind of go through here and just find out what you'll need and map it to a specific button on your controller. It's really easy to do. So we'll back up and our controller is now set up. We can actually navigate this menu here with our controller. We don't need a mouse and a keyboard to start playing our games or mess around with the settings. So now it's time to mess around with our settings to make our games look better or perform better if they're lagging like it sits right now. So we can head over to settings. You can do this with your controller, but I'm going to be using my mouse. We'll go to settings. So from within settings, the back end is very important. If you're on a lower end machine, I would recommend using DirectX 11. Direct3D 11, Direct3D 9 is DirectX 9, and Vulkan. You can test all three of these out. If you're on a decently powered machine, OpenGL is going to be your best bet. Now, PSP doesn't take a lot to run, and there's really no set configuration to get these games running at full speed. But just note that these settings here can be changed at any time. And if you're on a lower end machine, I would definitely recommend DirectX 9 or DirectX 11. For this machine here, this is a 6th Gen i5 with a RX 580. I'm going to go with OpenGL. This isn't a top of the line machine, but it does a pretty good job. We'll go back to settings. Frame skipping is something that could be utilized on very low end machines to get these games to at least run at an acceptable frame rate. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it, and if I can avoid it, I do it at all cost. Basically, if you've tried everything else to get a game to run at full speed and it just won't on your computer, try frame skipping. If you've changed the back end to DirectX 9, if you've gone with the rendering resolution of 1 and you just can't get that game to run at full speed, try frame skipping. Start with 1 and work your way up. Most of the time, 1 to 2 is going to work with most machines. So from frame rate control, we're not going to mess with any of this. Next up, we have a post-processing shader, something I usually don't do, but this could come in handy if you just want to get a different look for your game. You can add some aliasing, grayscale, bloom, sharpen. I don't usually mess around with this. I kind of like the natural look of the PSP games with an upscale. Full screen should already be enabled because we enabled it at the beginning of the video. Rendering resolution. Now this is probably the most important part of the settings for PPSSPP. And this is also the part that's going to make our games look amazing. So on this machine here, I can go all the way up to 8x with no trouble at all. This will bring my resolution to 3840 by 2176, really close to 4K. If we're going to 1x on the PSP, the resolution will be at the stock resolution of 480 by 272. And this really stresses out your GPU and CPU. So like I mentioned, if you want to get that 4K look, Try with 8. If you just can't handle it, go on down with it. You'll notice a big difference just going to 2 from 1. For this here, I'm going to 8. I do want to turn on VSync so I don't have any screen tearing. There's also a few speed up hacks in here. And again, before you try that frame skip, try this. Lazy texture caching. You can turn this on. We also have disable slower effects and spline quality. I want this to look as best as possible, so I'm going with high. I'm going to turn these speed hacks off. But before you go and start doing frame skip, make sure you try these speed up hacks. From texture scaling, we have an upscale level. Even with this machine, I can go to 2x. Definitely makes a difference. Upscale type, BRZ, hybrid, bicubic, hybrid plus bicubic. I usually leave it at XBRZ with the upscaling. Deposturize is something I usually never mess around with. We also have some filtering. Most of the time I can set it at 16 and be fine, but for this machine I go to 8x. Texture filtering, I leave this to auto. Screen scaling filter, linear. 
And the last thing I always do from within the settings is turn on my frame counter. Both, it'll give me the FPS in the top right hand corner and the speed of the game. So like I said, this is definitely gonna make your games look amazing, but some PCs aren't gonna be able to handle this. I would recommend just messing around with your rendering resolution before anything at all. Try four, three, two, and if you have to go to one, then you'll have to go to one. I mean, some PCs are just too low powered to run any of these games at full speed. But keep in mind, if you have a PC that was made in at least the last six years, you should be able to do three to four X with this emulator, no problem at all. We're gonna back up. We can go to games and we can start playing. So I'm gonna go with Little Big Planet. Remember, we're upscaled 3840 by 2176. I'll get into some gameplay. All right, so here we are with that upscale level. Now, if you wanna go back to the menu while you're inside of a game, you can actually press escape on your keyboard or you can press your left shoulder button on your Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. It'll bring us right here. That way we can save and load. I already have a load state here. If I wanna save, I'll just choose save state. I'll move up a bit. I'll come back and I can load it from here. So I'm loaded right back in. It looks really good. It looks so much better than the original version on PSP. And I'll give you a quick look here. I'll back up, settings, and I'm just gonna turn this back to one. You'll notice a big difference. It definitely brings these games alive and makes them totally different. We'll go back up. So here's 3840 by 2176. So even if I just wanted to go up a little bit, it still looks great. So we'll go all the way back down real quick. 1x. Not too great on a big screen. Doesn't look good at all. Go to settings and I'll just bring this up to three. As you can see, definitely makes the game look a lot better from 1x to three. And this really doesn't take a lot to run. Make sure you save your game before you exit, but we can go to exit the menu and we can try something different. So I'll just start up Tekken 6. Now if I press that speed button, it's gonna jump that speed up. Up at the top, instead of running at 100%, we're running at 1000% speed now. This'll just get you through the menus super quick. Sometimes you overshoot a little bit, but I think it's worth having on because there's some games that just take a long time to get into gameplay. So I just got into a little bit of gameplay and I set the resolution back to 1x just to give you a look. We're at the stock resolution of the PSP screen. Back up, go to settings. Rendering resolution and I'll just go back up to 8. That's what this can handle. But as you can see, all the jaggies are totally gone and it really does change the experience of these games. I mean, some of these games look like whole different games when they're upscaled. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I know this was a bit long for a PSP video, but I did want to cover as much as I could. I've had a lot of people asking about this emulator, and recently I've been doing a lot of emulation videos, so I figured I'd go ahead and knock this out. All links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.